evening, everyone. Um, welcome to our next webinar on the, on the topic of new center guidelines due to the COVID-19. So basically, I, I know that uh, most of you um, uh, got a lot of information from your head offices and uh, uh, on the hotel level, you have discussed about these uh, center guidelines and this is the well-known topic uh, recently going around. So as the, the pandemic is impacting, all our um, lives, let's say, um, we need to adapt. So basically, uh, in, uh, with the recent changes in the guidelines and the, 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 in the hotel operations, it will have the deep impact on terms in terms of the hygiene and the, the regulations in the hotel operations. So we will just uh, basically go through the, some of the guidelines. Um, as I mentioned, um, uh, most of the brands chains they have received their corporate pack, uh, let's say, the sanitation gu uh, sanitary guidelines, let's say, from their head offices, and then it is distributed almost at, uh, almost all brands. They have started to relaunch, let's say, uh, the, the, all the guidelines with the um, well-known, let's say, companies like Taxa Insurance and the Collab and the, with all these uh, hygiene companies that we uh, now, and then they came up with the introduc introduction of the uh, guidelines that's uh, working with the WHO and uh, with what they have uh, imposed in terms of them uh, in terms of the regulations. So we will just go through today um, the uh, main topics of the what is the guidelines is all about. So in order to be more structured, we do have the agenda for uh, for today. We will go through the general information about uh, how it is impacted, what is the major changes health and safety and uh, regulations that's uh, mainly before we, we tend to uh, not to give them the real attention for this topic. Now it is coming on top of each um, uh, each topic and uh, almost um, this is one of the value that's a department or the person in the hotel that all eyes on on, on him, on her, on her regarding the uh, of these topics. So we will discuss about the front office regulations, housekeeping, FMB, which is another uh, department for us uh, with a lot of regulations, engineering, maintenance, uh, LND, uh, another essential point, let's say, in the in the center of this topic, uh, in, uh, in in conveying the messages to the colleagues, to the guests, how the people needs to be uh, trained. So the message to the guests uh, can go to the effectively uh, as per the regulations. Of course, we will add some best practices as well. So just a couple of housekeeping notes um, uh, regarding uh, today's webinar. Uh, regular, uh, webinar is already recording. So we'll be sharing as usual in our uh, YouTube channel as well as we will post the link to the group. Um, uh, duration is around approximately 15 minutes. I do have my counterpart, uh, Nijat Aliya, will be also uh, presenting the, some operational departments, uh, procedures. Uh, from uh, Dubai, I'm, uh, uh, I'm co connecting from the Qatar currently. Uh, so if any kind of technical issues, please use the chat panel uh, for discussions and the questions and inquiries. Also, chat panel is the very much convenience uh, for our today's webinar. All panelists are on the mute, uh, so please do not unmute. If you would like have any questions, you can just write in the chat box or in the, we are live in the you know, social media channels. Any comments, any questions, just post out uh, under the watch part of in the, in the Facebook, uh, so to, to have, uh, so we can discuss here. And of course, last is that please subscribe our, to all our social media channels. Okay, so uh, moving forward with the general info, which is the major changes that's coming. As I told before, uh, most of us tend to, um, in the time to time, ignore the some safety guidelines and the center guidelines in the hotel. Uh, it was a department actually working uh, closely with the uh, specifically with the kitchen and, and the sometimes the housekeeping, but. Uh, but now it is on in all areas of the hotel operation. So um, as the pandemic is moving forward with the uh, global uh, cases increasing, uh, some of the countries started to flatten the uh, curve, but uh, at the same time, of course, uh, it has deep impact on the travel industry. As we have talked uh, about this topic several times, I don't want to go into deep how it impacted, how it is um, uh, at the deep uh, uh, reflection on our uh, the, the lives of the people working in the hospitality industry as well as the guests 
uh, and, uh, but we need to be very much positive. So in order to come back and bounce back, let's say very, very much positive in terms of the um, uh, guidelines, we, uh, the, the guidelines need to be followed, uh, which is issued by the WHO. And the most of them, that's actually the part of our life. It's like um, the, the hygiene that we need to be uh, sure that it is always there. So in order to have them uh, uh, to have in place. But unfortunately, as you know, in some of the hotels as well, uh, uh, the hygiene and uh, these all these center guidelines were not so very much uh, taken as an uh, important or uh, as a crucial but now it is uh, had an, uh, the global alert let's say uh, so basically we will just go through what is the major guideline that they're going to change so the main topic here we talked about the commercial uh, standoff of the um, of this uh, welcome back uh, where we need to really um, uh, <clears throat> concentrate on the strategies, but all the strategies are uh, mostly now, it is very much uh, co uh, re correlated, let's say, with them um, uh, protecting the public health. So basically, if you reopen the hotel, you, you, you cannot go as the business as usual. Some of the, let's say, I have heard about the, some of the airlines, even they, they are not permitted to fly. Why? Because they thought that they're gonna do the same business as usual in terms of the protecting the public health, but it didn't go through. Now then some airlines have a, a really going the through changes. So in the down in the ground, as a hoteliers, we need to be very much sure that everything is in place, people, the guests are uh, feeling safe, as well as our colleagues uh, feeling uh, safe. So there is a welcome back, but there is a two messages. And the two messages is actually directing to them, our colleagues, as well as our guests. So uh, some of the topics that's uh, pertaining about the colleagues, there is a um, uh, specific guidelines that needs to be uh, followed. So I will take a little bit um, simple on these uh, terms and the uh, guidelines that we are talking today. So as I told, it is not the rocket science. Uh, it is uh, most of the things we know, but we didn't put in the place. But now it is gave another, another global alert for us to, to be sure that these guidelines are followed. So every property actually they have prepared, I guess that most of the properties and the chain properties, they have received the guidelines from the corporate office with the action plan for the operational department, as well as the commercial point. So commercial point we have discussed a lot, but we didn't uh, discuss about action plans about the operational departments, how they need to align with the uh, newly stand, new uh, launched standards of the uh, safety regulations in order to be in the same page. So it's all about the communication within the departments and the rules are clear with the, uh, the about the guidelines. So that's why each uh, operation department, they need to prepare the project plan, let's say, if you are not part of the uh, chain, you, uh, you most probably will gonna come with the general manager and sit with the uh, department heads and come up with the action plan for the each department. For example, for housekeeping, you will have the action plan and uh, you need to find out um, the, the companies that you need to get the supplies as well as the, all these uh, protection equipments. Uh, so you put everything in a plan and in terms of the manning, in terms of the training, as well as for the front office, as well as for in, in other operation departments. And it should be carried out every week before you go to the reopening. If you are an open, uh, still open hotel, you are very much lucky that you are uh, still open. As you know, most of the properties are locked down due to the uh, non-existence of the business. If you are open, so you need to revise your action plan, revise your guidelines according to the uh, new guidelines from the WHO. So uh, the departments, they need to come up with what is the protective items and how it should be distributed because at the end of the day, we are living in the very much um, um, uh, bad days, let's say. It's not good for the hotels in terms of the uh, cost saving as well. So you need to be very much tight in your budget as well as uh, you should have the strict regulations of how you distribute your items you don't want to just uh, put the uh, protecting mask let's say surgery mask in, the, in the one hour it just disappeared because uh, your colleagues they are not trained enough to how they need to use it so another point is the regular health checks which is actually should be carried out within the departments and every department should have his 
uh, regular health check of their colleagues as well. So in the daily briefings, early, uh, early morning briefings, as well as the afternoon briefings, you need to always be in touch of the people, with the people and uh, get to know your employees, how they are feeling, if they are doing well, if something is um, not in place, so you can be early alerted before this colleague goes to the employee entrance and you find out that she or he is not feeling good. So it's better that you always keep this communication with your employees. Another part is the reorganizing the business activity for minimal contact. So basically what's happening? As the pandemic is moving, we do have the new trends is coming. So if something happens, always there is a trends following. The trends is the general trends is the contactless journey. As you know, all the customers they they go through the customer journey wheel wheel as I feel about think about the car wheel so through the booking through the dreaming of about the travel and uh, about the um, good booking pro process planning coming to the hotel transportation and all these then the, the, let's say the journey is called customer journey wheel so you need to be very much sure that from the first day, from the planning perspective, from the dreaming part, you, you are aware of all, all the, uh, let's say, regulatory guidelines, and you, sh you need to be sure that your marketing department is aware of the, what the guidelines and how they need to communicate to the guests, and you should be in the first page of, the, um, uh, of your, uh, let's say, uh, brand website, let's say, communicating the health, health and safety messages to your customers, so you, they can be alerted previously. You don't want... Uh, have the customers losing, you don't want to lose the customers because your marketing department didn't post any messages related to the uh, pandemic that's ongoing and what the regulation the hotel is taking to protect them. So you need to convey this message prior so the guests, you don't have the, the issue of losing the customer. Then it comes to the uh, planning perspective, you need to be sure that you are in dealing with the OTA channels as well the, with all the um, uh, review channels that you are in a place with all your regulatory, let's say, messages about the guidelines. So guest feels that he is, uh, he is uh, secure and she, uh, he or she has, the, has all the plans, all the, the hotel took all the plans against what's going on. So then it comes to the transportation, if they go guest booked, so if he goes through the uh, specific journey uh, using your transportation from your, uh, let's say, from the airport to the hotel or from hotel to the airport what is the guidelines should be taken so we will discuss in a meeting as well then once he came who is uh, welcoming him or her and uh, what is the approach how the bellboy needs to approach to the guests what is the social distancing uh, process going on in the uh, uh, in the lobby area how they need to go to the uh, front office because everything will be change to the contactless so basically most of the chains they understood that actually the, the what we were discussing about contactless journey in the future actually already here so uh, the business activity meaning they're organizing the business activity for the minimal contact it means that you need to go through all the areas of the journey of the customer and find out the guidelines that will be definitely going through this processes so you don't lose at the end of the day any business. Welcoming back the guests, so uh, you should have the dedicated hotline to the best uh, to prepare for the guest stay, so you, you should have internal as well the hotline, uh, so you, uh, if something happens, this is the first, uh, first area of the contact, this is the uh, contact for, the, for, your, for any, anything coming around. Uh, apart from that, uh, you do have the guest access to the medical professions. You need to be sure that there is um, accessibility for the medical professions. If you have any nurse in the in the house, so it is better time to utilize. So before you were utilizing it time to time with any accidents or the colleague accidents or uh, somebody had um, uh, the, the, uh, the injured something. But now it is time to use this nurse as well as the, the at his potential. Uh, for these guidelines and uh, to be sure that the guests are have the access to these uh, uh, medical professions. Information on changes to the service, so it is better, as I told, um, uh, during this customer journey, you should be sure that um, uh, the, the all signages regarding the what is changed in the operation as are in place. So basically what you would like to do, you would like to be sure that uh, very much transparent message is going across all channels. 
you don't want to put something on the web page, but when the guest is coming and you found out something differently. Okay, so that's why it is it is always you don't want to end of the at the end of the day with a complaint. So because there is a risk of the more complaints than before, it is better you always had the communications meet, uh, meeting and you always go through the guidelines again that you should that all the person all the colleagues in your department are aware of what's going on. Hygiene instructions and sanitizers on arrival. So as now, as I know now, you all are uh, aware of what's going on in terms of the sanitizers, on the uh, surgical mask, uh, and the, even the gloves as well. In the, you know, once you go to the markets, they are not allowing you even to go to the uh, market with the gloves. In some countries, even temperature check, and everything is just tied up. So you need to have the same kind of messages, same kind of the, uh, guidelines in the hotels as well so they feel that this process is uh, is over they don't want to feel that in the market is better uh, you, they are safe enough but in hotel they are not safe enough so you should give that that message that your property is the safe enough than any other place so i had read a lot of articles about the one hotel is the they they put a lot of regulations but actually in the process in the operation they don't have this so the guy, the, the, the customer complained about this and put a the TripAdvisor review and the, she was there from, the, uh, from one of the channel. Let's say he put that the, the market is the safer than this hotel. So that's why you need to be very much aware of uh, that the, everything in place. And the, of course, the lead of this project is the, on top of the general manager. It goes to the health and safety team responsible person in the hotel social distancing in place which is uh, well known and uh, should be there are a lot of signages around online check-in check-out which is will be accelerated from this um, time on and people will be doing more mobile checking so you will see the trend increasing in the mobile check-ins so process for handling the suspected virus cases so you should have the process what you're gonna do once it is suspected because uh, all the, uh, the cases you are you, you cannot find out within the even the 10 days in the last four days you find out that actually this person is infected so basically you should have the guideline in place what is the next processes that you're gonna do so the main objective is to minimize the touch contamination so basically removing any unnecessary objects you don't have you you don't have these, you don't want to have these uh, fancy stuff around in the lobby where they get the, the customers or the, even the, the, yeah, the kids are playing and touching and uh, even the customers are just checking and sometimes they're very much curious, to, uh, curious enough about checking some object. So you don't want to have a lot of objects around in the front, front desk of the um, reception and the, the area of the lobby. So, and that, uh, of course, the minimizing the sharing tools with other staff and the guests of the, to minimize this, you need to have the contactless journey, which is actually affecting from the room service, affecting from the housekeeping services, as well as the FND, what will be the procedures we will discuss in the uh, operational departments. So guest hygiene is the providing the guests with the gel, mask, wipes, so upon request, so you should always have this in place, because markets, they do have this in place, so you don't want to have the guests complaining about that, uh, I, I can go to the market, I can have the gloves, I can have the uh, this sanitizer, uh, but in the hotel you are not giving it because you don't want to give the, any cost uh, involved in this. So basically it can damage your a little bit brand, um, uh, brand uh, promise at the end of the day in terms of the guidance. So it's better always to give these, it will cost for you a li little bit money, but at the end of the day you will be sure that uh, they get the guidelines and pray in place, and then the, the people are really taking care, taken care like this. The photos I know that you have seen all these pictures all around, and then this pandemic is, is really impacted all our lives. So, I think that we know most of these things than any other things now because it's uh, impacting in all our. Uh, corners of our life. Follow the new cleaning protocols and memorize high touch areas. So it's like the, 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 the room holders, let's say, so it will be very much effective if you really uh, go through the cleaning uh, protocols. 
organized habits for the social dis distancing start to work alone, uh, one meter minimum distance, which is actually a major topic that is um, putting the uh, signatures uh, in, the, in the guest lobby, as well as in all our other areas of the social uh, gathering. So it will make the guests as well to feel that there is a distance and between them and the, any other people. And um, it is always better that you keep the staff to work alone. It, you don't want to send five people in one room to clean the room or three people in there. So one person can do this alone and then supervisor can go and check. But that's the process. So it's all about the mindset, as I told. Uh, this is um, when you talk to the, your uh, staff and you, when you give this information, you need to be sure that the mindset is there. It's not all about the regulations. You change the mindset, the regulations are going to come and it will be easy to apply. Floor markings to organize the flows or an alternative visible distancing system to, uh, to show the people that you are really taking care of the distancing and there is a security, let's say, in the lobby area, for example, keeping that distance or the people and the, your staff around. Uh, in the FMB, let's say, outlets to give the people that in, 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 uh, impression as well as the keeping that social distancing between the customers. Looking forward, um, for the uh, preparing for the medical situation, uh, as I told, health and safety responsible person is the first uh, responsible person in the, in the in entire hotel, let's say, even he is more important than the general manager in, in these days. He needs to be sure that he is aware of all the emergency informations. So he needs to be sure that the number of accidents and emergency departments are in place. So everybody is aware of what's going on. And the health centers as well as the private hospitals numbers he had conveyed to the, cast, uh, to the uh, staff. So it is all, over, all around the, the, the social gathering places, let's say in the FM outlets, in the uh, reception, as well as the other places. So I guess, I guess when they guess feel that, that they are ill or you suspect anything, you have the number in front of your eye to call and to get, you, you don't want to end up with the situation that uh, your, no one in your department or no one in your hotel doesn't know the, 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 the emergency numbers. So constant trainings is the, is the key to, to apply these, um, let's say, guidelines. How to deal with the suspected case? If symptoms indicate the suspected case of the COVID-19, general medical professional should be first point of contact. So as I told, nurse should be the, or the health and safety um, uh, executive or the, uh, the supervisor who, or the manager who is in, uh, responsible for this. He needs to be highly alerted on this kind of uh, things. Uh, and it is not uh, advised to dial directly to the emergency services. So we need to understand that actually, if you suspect something, it doesn't mean that person is already ill. So it's your suspicion. So uh, as I told, uh, most of these, um, the, uh, let's say the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, it shows that the, sometimes it is a COVID-19, but actually maybe the person has uh, got the flu or something is uh, having the allergy in her, in, in his, uh, let's say, mouth, so basically in his throat, he's coughing. It's nothing to do with the COVID-19. So basically, you need to be very much sure when you need to be alerted, and, uh, and the, if there is a really severe uh, symptoms, you just, uh, with the breathing and the, having the difficulty in the breathing, you just uh, contact with the emergency services, who will decide what action needs to be taken. In the, maybe calling the hospital or just secluding that person in the one area so they, nobody will be infected and upon the, upon the medicals are uh, arrived to the hotel. Rooms with the suspected case should be left empty, of course, 24 hours. And some of the hotels are actually there uh, after the deep cleaning and disinfection as well. They just give it 14 days, even the, not touching the, the hotel uh, the room. So in order to be sure that everything is gone, even so there is the disinfection, uh, it gives uh, from time to time, it's, it's all about uh, the guidelines from which property you are working. As I told chain, they are different in some hotels. If you are not so very much sure and you don't have any, let's say hygiene company that you are working, it's better just uh, you keep another three, four days and you see, and you do the deep cleaning and after that uh, disinfection. So it will be ready to 
cell again. You could reception with the medical kit. So the first thing and the visible part once the guest is coming is the reception, of course. They would like to have the, all the medical kits in place so the customer can see, use, and be sure that they are in the safe place. So the disinfect wet wipes for cleaning surfaces, face masks, gloves, protective apron, so full length, long sleeved uh, pine for so basically all these um, um, uh, the, the equipment should be there uh, at least to be sure that uh, that uh, it is available and uh, you don't want to store somewhere in the back office once something happens and the guest doesn't see it and can would like to utilize the, some of the equipment but it is not in place you don't want to end up with the complaint or end up with the something uh, even the dangerous let's say Moving forward, um, uh, of course, the um, role of the responsible officer who is in the health and safety and responsible for the health and safety uh, to put the new daily work routines, of course, in practice to monitor compliance with the good practices and, as, of course, the lead preventive hygiene measures. So, as I told, um, the, uh, the health and safety in the person in the hotel need, needs to be utilized by the property effectively. He needs to be aware uh, that the, all departments are in line with the communication, with the guidelines, and he needs to be sure that all guidelines are followed by each member of the department. If something suspected uh, that uh, someone is not um, uh, doing well, he needs to seclude this person and uh, and the nurse should be involved and even the, if the, 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 the colleague is not feeling good, you can contact the medical care to take care and uh, you, you don't want to have someone sneezing even he doesn't have any problem but he has a temperature but you don't want to end up with the issue at the hotel. So basically in the checkpoints and the security, you should have the temperature in place and the, all the and some, other, some countries they are doing even the application where they control the application if you are a green, so you are allowed to go in and work. Uh, adapt the health and safety recommendation requirements to the hotel. So basically, if there is a guideline, you need to meet with the department heads and it should be of, uh, always reminded in the daily briefings. Make sure that the team is fully briefed on the procedures, of course. Display communication support throughout in the hotel. You, put, you need to put all the all these signs in every place. So even the uh, some of some of your colleagues forget about something. It is always available there in the lifts, in the in the back of the house. You don't want to have everything in the front of the house, but in the back in the back of the house, you don't have put these signs in the ground about the social distancing, all about this, and uh, let's say protecting uh, wearing the protecting masks. So. It, 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 the whole transparency of the guidelines should be in the place. Supervise online customer feedbacks, reviews regarding the hygiene and ensure the follow-up. As I thought, it comes from the day one. So if you put the messages in place and the whole customer journey is going effectively, but once it happens that in the front office or in other uh, department in FMB, the guest is uh, really having the issue, with the, the regulation that is not followed, you need to take a lead and uh, you don't want to end up with the guest complaint. If there's any guest complaint, you need to utilize and uh, ensure that you are replied to the guest and contacted to the guest uh, in on time, the minor. You don't want to have left the trip advisor for a while. After two months or three months, you get another one and your ranking is dropping and as well as your brand awareness in the market is damaged. So I will move forward with the front office and then uh, I will hand over to the um, Nijat Aliyev. So he will get just give some insights about operation departments. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Jehun. Uh, thank you for um, participating for our webinar today. We are talking about uh, new norms and new standards about the uh, post-COVID-19. And obviously, this initiative came from the, uh, from the different organizations, such as uh, AXA, insurance company, uh, big hotel chains, WHO, and a few other participants uh, related to the uh, health and safety organizations. The aim is actually to adapt. The aim is not to change. And uh, the aim is also uh, to make sure that currently we do 
protect uh, health and safety of our employees and our um, guests as well. We do hope that the standards and norms will be temporary. However, we don't know how long it will take. It, it may take uh, six months to uh, one year, depend on the country, depend on the managing. However, everyone is hoping the uh, vaccination uh, to be uh, on the market soon. So uh, at the moment, at the current environment, we need to adapt, obviously. The business cannot uh, stop, cannot uh, wait when the, everything will be opened. So uh, in order to ensure that we are uh, looking the few standards. So as my colleague Jae Hoon had explained, or few elements in the uh, tourist cycle, tourist uh, uh, experience. Uh, we are moving to the front office where uh, the welcoming procedure is uh, changing. When we're meaning the welcoming procedure is changed, for example, when the guests have been arrived, uh, they will go through the uh, uh, hygienic tunnel. It calls hygienic tunnel where it's, the chemical has sprayed you on your clothes, uh, hoping to not to stand uh, the virus infection on your clothes. And while you will pass it, obviously there will be a social distancing and uh, the norms uh, of the, the gloves and the facing mask. Uh, this, will, uh, this doesn't mean that the COVID-19 will be uh, killed. However, it's a preventive. Uh, all the norms and the standards which we're talking about today, it's a preventive. It's uh, not um, protection. Uh, so currently when you're approaching to the desk, obviously there is a social distance, there is a uh, mask and the gloves. Uh, some of the uh, hotel chains are branding these masks, branding the gloves in order not to be looked as a medical as possible. So it will be more branded. Uh, in front of the how, uh, front office desk, the reception desk uh, will have a, a temporary glass or it could be a plastic in order to avoid the breathe in and breathe out between the uh, between the uh, guest and the employee uh, as well as um, as much as possible obviously depend on the hotel but it's a trend at the moment to more uh, transform your hotel into digitalization when I mean the digitalization, it, it could be uh, no registration of card, physical signage, it could be on iPad, uh, no payment in terms of the cash, it could be by the card, with the tapping the card, you know that there are a lot of uh, details of tapping the card as well. Uh, and of course, um, sanitization norms to be, uh, to be around the uh, reception desk as possible. Uh, it will be also advisable to uh, inform the guest uh, what it, it could be done, what it cannot be done, means do and don't list that that will be advisable uh, during their stay. Obviously, uh, uh, we spoke about the uh, critical point of contact, so as much as possible to avoid the contact. Uh, like I said, uh, so the guest journey on the reception is uh, signing on the physical paper, which is, as I said, could be on an iPad a payment. It could be on the credit card or it could be by tap. And uh, even the keys, when you're handing over in the keys, some hotels already started to have an application while uh, your door could be opened on app and closed on app. Some hotels also doing e-wallet, which means uh, there will be created an e-wallet by your card, or this card could be the wristband in your hand, and you could able to spend the money on the property without physically signing on the check or, or physically asking for the card to uh, open the door. On the next slide. We're talking about the uh, pre-arrival pre uh, uh, transformation. 
transportation, I'm sorry. So uh, as you know, uh, it could be uh, different sources, obviously, it could be a taxi, it could be Uber, or it could be uh, limousine services. Uh, when you are moving to hotel from airport, uh, probably. So the uh, few companies already had started to do the disinfection uh, on the car on a daily basis. Even uh, the glass partition between the driver and the passenger is available. The payment as much as possible to avoid the cash credit card or the prepaid credit card. And um, uh, as well as um, the uh, conversation between the driver and the uh, passenger will be much less. So it's pretty much, again, uh, moving into the uh, digitalization um, scenario where the digitalization is uh, taking a role in here, uh, which means you can have an application and this application would be able to uh, prepaid in advance and will ensure your health and safety measurements. On the next slide. We're talking about the uh, hotel entrances. As I said before, obviously there are the uh, few norms and regulations in, uh, in the country that depend on the country, but this is highly recommended by the uh, WHO and the insurance companies in order to avoid any uh, contamination while guests staying. So if uh, regardless of the hotel type, which is the business hotel or a resort hotel in the entrance, please try to make sure that your guests have been uh, checked with the thermometer uh, of their temperature. Uh, it, it's not for giving a cautious, it's more about a preventive, like I said, it's, uh, although it doesn't uh, look nice, I agree, and it's not look appropriate. However, at the current circumstances, uh, it is acceptable to check with the thermometers, uh, with the touchless thermometers, uh, infrared thermometers, sorry, uh, the temperature of the guest, of the passenger, uh, that could avoid also for any other guest or any other supplier or any other employees that may come from outside and physically contaminate you. This is for the sake of preventive uh, on the uh, entrance of the hotel. So once guests had been entered or anyone had been entered, it goes through the uh, door, door of the hotel. Please, as I said, if it's possible in your hotel or in your country to have the chemical tunnel, which uh, sprays you on your cloth, that gives uh, preventive, like I said, it doesn't kill the COVID-19, it's a preventive uh, purposes. Social distances is very important, gloves and, um, and the uh, mask are very important. What are the uh, few best practices we had uh, seen nowadays that uh, valet parking is being uh, avoided so governments are not allowing the uh, valet parkers, uh, even the hotel uh, valet parker or the outsourced valet parkers, instead to have a, a park the car yourself nearby or in the uh, parking, dedicated parking slots. So once guests have been entered, uh, the door as much as possible uh, not to be opened or if it's likely to be opened in the luxury hotels, please make sure that it's been used with the uh, sanitizing of the gloves. But again, it's not recommended to open the door for the guests. This is the, uh, as we had spoken uh, before, uh, to make sure that it will be touchless uh, factors. On the next slide, So this is one of the uh, elements that uh, nowadays are very rapidly have been um, spread it, uh, online check-in and check-out. Uh, that again depends on the country, depends on the hotel, depends on the digitalization, IT infrastructure, obviously. However, this is something that could be looked at at the current stage uh, where guests can able to 
check in and check out online. This will avoid uh, this will avoid the uh, passing through the reception. Uh, I know that there are a few challenges at the moment, again, depend on the country, which is the passport scanning and the uh, prepayment in advance. Uh, however, uh, countries like China, for example, or in Asia, most of the countries, they are practicing in this way. Uh, I know that the bank uh, and the infrastructure, IT infrastructure of the bank have to support the uh, compliance in order to have the uh, check-in process smoothly. Uh, but what we have seen uh, recently that uh, even although it's an expensive uh, investment for this, this type of infrastructure, you could able to have an SMS uh, for, the, for the guest. For example, if the guest had booked the uh, a room in the hotel, uh, the SMS will be uh, given to the guest on their contact detail, obviously, which, in, which link will be provided, secure link will be provided. And through this secure link, you could be able to make your payment. This is also helping uh, currently, and uh, I'm not saying it's rapidly and everyone is satisfied from this, but slowly but effectively, people are getting used to it. The same goes for the food order as well, and the same goes to the uh, any orders from the outside, uh, outside catering as well, that helps the uh, payment and the touchless scenario. Again, uh, hotel have a uh, opportunity to practice uh, the online check in and check out, uh, to have a mobile uh, on the iPad uh, opera system, which is. Uh, nowadays are very uh, uh, popular. And uh, obviously, for the checkout purposes, try to make sure that uh, everything has been prepaid in advance so guests could able, could, uh, could able to pass from the reception free and uh, not to have any communication. On the next slide. So this is what we had spoken before. It's a mobile check-in. It could be a kiosk or it could be uh, on the application itself. Uh, we see nowadays that it's not in, in only in the uh, hotels, but in the even the supermarkets, like uh, uh, big supermarkets like a Care4, they do have the applications as well. And uh, they are using the apps and they are using the um, uh, reward program uh, due to the current uh, situation. On the next slide. So um, housekeeping, this is actually very interesting that uh, uh, I know that majority of you will not be agreed on, but however, this is uh, standards and I know that this is reflecting to the uh, the PNL of the hotel but new regulation dictates that um, when the guest checks out you cannot sell the room physically uh, within the 24 hours minimum 24 hours which means that uh, back to back you cannot uh, sell the room and this obviously will reflect to the hotel occupancy uh, revenue management and the sales uh, strategy as well. Uh, what happening actually, uh, allow me to explain to you. So uh, when the guest is checking out from the uh, room, contaminated or not, uh, this room has to be sanitized. And in our next slide, we will show it, but in this uh, sanitizing process, uh, there is something called a fogging, a special uh, machine that had been sanitizing the room itself. When you do that, uh, it have to stay, uh, this is the picture, uh, it have to stay in the room at least, at least 14 to 16 hours. Now, uh, new norms dictate 24 hours, which helps and uh, God forbid, if there is a COVID-19 in the room, it's killing it 100%. Now, this is manual. Obviously, there are some which uh, had been created in US, in China, in Japan, I saw it as a robot that uh, goes inside and uh, with the um, ultralight, ULT, with the ultralight, it's uh, killing the old germs, bacteria, 
and the contamination, including the COVID-19. So this uh, housekeeping uh, new machines and new technology actually preventing and giving the safety. Uh, and obviously, uh, once it's happening, uh, within the 24 hours, we are not allowed to sell the room. What new strategy comes up from the uh, sales and marketing is that they are selling the rooms as much as possible long, longer, means two nights or three nights, minimum stay of the two nights or the three nights, or if it's more possible, and uh, making sure to avoid the back-to-back -back sales. Now, um, turn down services are being removed. So uh, as you know, in the uh, luxury properties, in the five-star properties, there are the uh, two times cleaning. So once it's in the 10 or 11 a.m. and the second one turned down is at 5 or 6 p.m. So turn down services 5 or 6 p.m. is that being removed completely and it's only kept the uh, 10 and 11 a.m. In this time, in this period, housekeeping also uh, advising to the guests not to be in the room while the housekeeping are cleaning the room, which is a very important uh, standard. Uh, some amenities related to the um, soap, shampoo, uh, is being um, covered with the plastic bag, is been uh, covered with the special uh, pouches to uh, make sure that it's not have been touched by the guest or touched by the supplier. So the first person who will be touching is the guest himself which uh, is uh, been discarded uh, after the usage or discarded even the guest if, that, if it's not had been used. Mini bar uh, as a bar itself, as a fridge itself is closed. So everything is had been uh, ordered by the room service um, as much as possible. So uh, any amenities related to the tea and coffee, uh, is being sanitized, as I said, and it has been replaced in advance. On this slide, we already spoken about the uh, how the new norms of the housekeeping. So we're going to talk about the uh, the uh, disinfection itself. Uh, like I said, please try to avoid the back-to-back -back sales of the uh, room itself. This is giving just a protection. And while you are cleaning your uh, room and have been disinfected and cleaned, there is a new signage uh, kept on the door that it had been cleaned and disinfected. This is a new norms that had been uh, rolled out in the hotels. On the next slide. So we're going to talk about the uh, linen uh, in generally. So uh, whether it's clean or not, uh, it has to be removed. This is the new standards that have been dictated. Uh, obviously, it's increasing the cost. Obviously, it's um, it's not the standards that as we know it before. And um, in the cleaning linen, uh, they separate always from the dirty linen means. Housekeeping normally keeping in the same uh, uh, trolleys that uh, they are always um, moving from one room to another room. So uh, they have to be separated as much as possible, obviously, and uh, retain the uh, protective plastic, distribute the daily, avoid uh, stockpiling on the trolleys. This means that. Um, uh, housekeeping attendees cannot do the multifunction at the same time at the same trolley. Uh, if you're removing the dirty linen, you have to remove the bed with the minimal uh, uh, with the minimal damage. Uh, put used sheet towels into the washing basket immediately, and uh, be sure to keep clean linen and dirty linen separate. Uh, the, the laundered wash and pillowcases and the mat uh, mattresses protectors after the each day avoid uh, leaving the soiled linen trolleys in area and open to staff or uh, procure 
the uh, lockable linen trolleys. This again for the protection wise, to make sure not to contaminate one um, item to another. On the next slide. Um, we're talking about the um, the housekeeping and the uh, maintenance. So what is the important in the um, housekeeping and in the maintenance? Always is to have a uh, plan, obviously. So you know that today how many guests is going to arrive. The dedicated rooms are had been uh, uh, had been. Uh, assigned for them and uh, during this you have to make sure that there is a uh, pretty much the uh, work plan is had been done especially for housekeeping so uh, adjust the bedroom allocation division of the task flow of the movement preparation of the cleaning materials this will help both housekeeping and the engineering department uh, to know what to do and how to do uh, at the same day uh, inform employees, this is very important uh, as a training uh, for the new procedures. As you know, some of the procedures are available online. It's free. Uh, it's available on the few websites. Uh, you can able to have the uh, training related to the COVID-19. Uh, housekeeping trolleys need to be checked. Please make sure that in the stock, in the same floor stock in the pantry rooms, there is no uh, kept the stock, so everything have to be in the trolleys itself. Your trolleys have to be clean, sanitized in generally. Maintenance, uh, if a colleague needs uh, to enter to the guest room to perform a repair or maintenance, they should check with the guest if the guest would like to remain in the room or step outside. Obviously, it's advised to, uh, that the guest will not be inside the room while uh, they will be, uh, while the maintenance will go on in the room. Uh, sanitizing the hands uh, before and after the performing the maintenance is must. Uh, I will hand over to my colleague, Jay Hoon, for the next slides. Thank you. Thank you, Nijad. <clears throat> so we're gonna go with them about the messages to the guests. So as I told, um, uh, we need to be sure that actually our first of all, our customers and the, the, the colleagues are well trained, so they can uh, they can they can understand what the messages need to be delivered to the uh, guests. So it's all about the transparency, what's going and what's happening in terms of the operational uh, what the operational uh, part of the guidelines. So they are also informed if they are if there is a if there is a request upon what's going on how you are regulating this so your colleagues they do have that knowledge to convey that message uh, so you need to give them some information about um, essential amenities that has been removed from the from the rooms uh, but if they would like to request they can do it at um, uh, they can call and they can uh, request as a um, uh, from the housekeeping uh, and the cleaning of the room upon request, of course, again. So it is all about the conveying the messages to the guests and minimizing that questions in later stage. So it is better to always give the full information at the front desk when the, once the guest is coming. So at least to uh, some of the hotels, for example, they just do the at least giving the, keeping that uh, social distancing, but giving the like it will be the host who is welcoming the guests and uh, while already they have checked in they give the pre the pre pre uh, information about uh, what's happening in the room so they can they are not shocked or they are not be they don't have any clue what's happening in the in their room so you give the, some basic information what is they they need to expect at the room what is the procedures because the people used to say, have the habits of uh, having all these amenities at room, they don't call, so now it's everything is changed, so, uh, so they need to understand as well. So message should be very much clear, simple and clear. Of course, the simplicity is the best that you, you don't overload the customer with the whole guidelines that you are doing in the back. Uh, there will be, of course, certain a lot of people, a lot of customers who are actually will be asking a lot of questions which are very much sensitive on this topic. Uh, so your um, the responsible officer who is trained, uh, there should be the property champion by the 
let's say, not only their health, health and safety uh, responsible person, but of course, each department, they need to have their all the uh, needed knowledge as a health and safety, so I'm trained by the health and safety. So when the health and safety person is not around, so these people from each department are around so they can answer their particular question. We don't want to end up with them um, uh, non-answered questions at the, at the beginning of their journey. So it will create uncertainty for the customer journey. So they will have more and more questions. When they reach to the, their room, they're gonna call the reception, they're gonna call the concierge. So it is better to give that information at the beginning of their journey so it goes smooth to other areas and you don't ob overload your other operation departments. Moving forward with the FMB, we do have the, yeah, the recommended continental breakfast in the room or takeaways. So it's better, most of the chains are moving to the takeaways uh, and the, of course the in-room dining will be the best uh, option, let's say. Uh, some of the countries, they have even the, opened the uh, areas, uh, let's say, uh, in, the, the, uh, in the, let's say, outlets for the having the full breakfast, but actually with the minimum capacities, even some of the um, uh, restaurants, let's say, they once they open, they, if they, they are running only the 30-40% uh, of the capacity, the profit margin is not there, but if for the hotels, it will be a little bit uh, totally different for uh, moving forward. Uh, with the limited, of course, buffer service and uh, restaurant service replaced with the room service, of course, no upcharge for that. You need to be very much flexible with this in your in the back in the room service. Restaurant delivery service, yeah, you should have this delivery in place uh, with the procedure in place or so tray service in the room, takeaway boxes or table services. Some of, some properties already, once they, the pandemic already started, they started to use these uh, very much frequently uh, in terms of the trays as well as the takeaway box. I've seen a lot of takeaway box that's used uh, to deliver the food to the rooms. Keep a safe distance, which all the floors you have these, uh, these uh, signs, at least uh, to remind. Uh, once the, the guests finish there, they can place their tray outside the door and the, the, the person, the room service attendant, is gonna gather the, um, the room service tray. So actually, so there, will be, there will be not any, let's say, uh, the, uh, the connection, communication with the, with the guests as we used to have before. Yeah, uh, layout of the trays, uh, trays, you have the tableware and of the products and the glass, are most of them are put with the plastic bags. I have seen that some of the hotels they are putting everything in the plastic bags with the cutlers. So you, 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 the, the guests can feel that it is really very well managed and then delivered to the room. Uh, yeah, about the cutleries, wear the gloves all the time to show that this is actually a first impression. When you go to the hotel, if during this period, if you see the colleague who doesn't wear the gloves, this is the first impression. You will not move forward. So wearing the glass mask during the whole process of the customer journey is the essential in the delivering the, um, the service, expected service. Uh, so yeah, it's all about the guest mask, how to change, and it should be available all around uh, in all other places. Breakfast service procedures, as I told each department, uh, they do have the several um, the, the procedures that's coming, like a takeaway room service with uh, limitations in the, the, the buffet, the, in order to limit, uh, have the limitations in the buffet, we don't want to end up with the first day of the reopening, uh, let's say for um, a lot of guests are gathering in front of the uh, outlet and you need to explain again and you need to manage this crowd because everybody's uh, at home, they have, let's say, stuck at home, they, they would like to experience once they, they, it's open in the country, you can go out, they will rush to the hotels, they will rush to the services, uh, social areas, let's say. Uh, all about, again, the same processes that we used to, used to see in the room services. So it will be applying for the, uh, for the gloves and masks and, uh, of course, the all trays and the bags containing meals must be properly covered in order to deliver to them. Uh, to the guests. In terms of the kitchens, actually, the, we had the very good, uh, let's say, procedures in place before most of the hotels, they had some safety regulation uh, was in place and there was a 
huge, let's say, control by the standards, HHSP standards, uh, which is um, mainly taking care of the kitchen, let's say. And uh, so uh, we have, we will just put it uh, to the next level with putting more, let's say, uh, the plastic bags, uh, using usage of the plastic bags in the in all areas, let's say, to, uh, to keep that um, a level of the uh, hygiene in all areas. You have the, the of course, the, you will have the restrictions before, of course, when even you are working at the hotel, you had always this restriction board that telling that only the authorized people that can go to the kitchen. Uh, even though you are MOD, you are going to the hotel uh, in the kitchen area, you need to wear the, the, the head mask and the, all this kind of um, the hygiene, uh, let's say, protection tools. Uh, now it will be going to the next level of the uh, access restriction in order to be sure that uh, nobody uh, come up in the, in the kitchen area without these guidelines are followed. Uh, so yeah, the, uh, regarding the process, as you can see from the photos, uh, before we used to have this, the head uh, mask, let's say eight cups, and so right now we do have the mask as well as the gloves. All around this washing process is um, there are some recommendations which I will put here. I will not go one by one everything. So there will be temperatures raised from 50 to 60 Celsius, which used to be before 90 to 70 to 80 uh, Celsius degree. Uh, there is no specific that uh, scientific research that saying that the COVID will just stay. There are always some kind of the, uh, misleading information saying that yes, it can survive for one to 24 hours, uh, even 36 hours. The next we have another scientific research which is saying no, actually they cannot survive. So it's always better to do, uh, to take the precautionary measurements beforehand, not to have these uh, issues. Always wipe the door handles, swing doors, draw, drawers, belts, trailers handles, uh, because this is the areas that you, uh, you can be get um, infected and this is the areas that people always using in the back in the kitchen. Uh, so you do have the insurance all cleaning procedures and machines are checked and inspected. So you will have the, the, in the even the, the MOD checklist as well needs to be changed entirely before you used to go to the kitchen, just have a check how the colleagues are doing, how the process is doing, if they are overloaded, if they need an assistant. Right now, if you're MOD, you need to go into a deep and to find out, you need to be sure that you know the guidelines of the kitchen and the, the whole the process that's going in the back. So, and when you spot something in, uh, which is not in the guideline, which is not uh, what used to be, uh, you need to uh, put in the, your MOD report and the next day it should be reported. So uh, it, maybe the necessary trainings needs to be, uh, refresher trainings needs to be done again. Uh, so then the shifts as well, you should have the briefing before, uh, in the, before the starting of the, of the shift. Uh, let's say everybody needs to have the proper refresher training of 15 minutes, uh, let's say, shifts. So moving forward, of course, the engineering and maintenance, this is another uh, area which is actually, uh, they are um, essential part of the hotel. So uh, they need to ensure that uh, their air ventilation is working properly. There will be a lot of questions about the guests that if the air ventilation is taking the air from the other rooms and bringing it to the, uh, to your room, so some of the hotels are configurations is totally different. So uh, currently, the, the, you need to be sure that uh, this air ventilation is properly managed, it's cleaned, it is always regularly uh, maintained. Uh, you, you have the proper regulation in place, so if when the customer is asking, you can say that, okay, uh, you know, this, all these well, air ventilations are cleaned pro properly, even so the, weather is, the air is coming from the different rooms as well, the whole process is clean. Uh, of course, the humidity level in the most of the Middle East, it's a little bit uh, uh, problematic, let's say, humidity level. So outside, inside, so you need to maintain this level of the humidity in the rooms as well. Uh, yeah, uh, where the always this mask and the, all the housekeeping and the FMB departments are doing, the engineering department, maintenance department should be also following up, wearing the gloves, wearing the mask all the time. Be sure, it doesn't mean that you are engineering department, you are fixing something, you shouldn't be aware of the whole guideline of the housekeeping department or the let's say, front office. So you need to be aware and always uh, be sure that you are you get the refresher training from your head of the department, uh, from the LND department, from the health and safety regulatory person. 
so to be in the in line so in terms of the lnd as i told lnd is playing the major role uh, in whole this process and the how this process is going uh, smooth from a to z as i told uh, customer journey starts from the dreaming and it ends up with the uh, let's say reviewing, giving the review about the property. So you don't want to have the glitches in one of these process. So LND department is always make sure that uh, all the colleagues are aware of the, all the processes, how, how to handle the process. Now they do have additional responsibility to be sure that the guidelines are actually in place and the people are aware. They, they need to be very much working with the responsible officer of the health and safety. Even some of the hotels, they do have the, these two person are almost in the same office now, and they're, they're working together, coming up with their best, let's say, uh, simple uh, contents where they can deliver to the colleagues that they are aware of the, what's going on. And uh, of course, the senior management also, they need to be involved. They need to know what their department is lacking. Maybe you, you are not always there. Uh, maybe they are in the department of the health and safety uh, regulatory person or the MOD, they can spot that your colleague is not doing well in terms of the following the rules. So basically, you need to always have a consultation with the LND department and the, with the uh, health and safety regulatory person in order to be sure that everything delivered in proper manner. Of course, the training trainings and then and then if there is a re revision in the process or the any adjustment in their guidelines needs to be. Uh, can wait again because sometimes we receive one pack from the corporate office or we receive something from general manager we just tend to apply that one once the revision is coming nobody's checking their email nobody's uh, it is just hanging over the email but actually it is not in the action so you you need to be sure that you have always the refresh it is new for all of us uh, it is not that the well-known topic that we used to have it is new so basically you will always have the new adjustments new regulations coming in with them guidelines uh, yeah uh, you should have the process for the unwell guests and the colleagues what is the processes what uh, what needs to be done should you uh, call to the medical personnel or call the hospital and so the health and safety person uh, and uh, working with the, the LND department should be uh, in line in the, giving that let's say training to the property departmental champions in terms of the health and safety. So it is not only the one person dealing with all this process, but the each department should have champion who is dealing, who is working closely with the responsible officer and the LND department. So about the, they need to know about the, how the, what is the rules and changes in the, in the whole customer journey. To, of course, the trainings is uh, most of the time, it's all about the welcome and the informing guests with the confidence. They need to, we need to understand, of course, we are always uh, concentrating on the, on these guidelines, but we shouldn't forget that we are the, uh, we are working in hospitality. We need to always welcome the guests. Even so, we do have the uh, protection masks, gloves. We shouldn't feel that we are working in the hospital. We are still in the hotel. We are still in the service of the people. So to welcome and inform the guests with the confidence what the service they're going to get. And of course, there is, this is also done by the LND department to give that positivity, not always the negativity, but we should give that positivity of how to serve the people, how to serve the guests. And uh, so it will take the procedures with a little, a little bit more with ease, let's say. And the hygiene of colleagues is the, the number one. So of course it comes uh, with the hygiene of the staff, as I told, uh, the, because the colleagues is the uh, major point of the, uh, let's say contact of the service. So um, if the colleague is ill, he's not coming to work, it is uh, registered, everything in place, and the security who is in the front of the door for the employee entrance, they, they need to be sure that is is taking the properly the temperature, checking the application, if he is in the green zone or the red zone. So and it, accordingly, they need to decide if, the, the, if this uh, person needs to go home or to go to the hospital. Uh, and the recommendations, of course, the frequent hand washing in some areas, for example, in canteen, we tend to take our food ourselves. So maybe you can dedicate, you can have the dedicated persons and uh, who, for example, your recreation department is not working or the, uh, let's say, FMB department is not working because your hotel is already closed, let's say, or you have a minimized, let's say, manning in the 
other departments, you can, instead of unemploying them or uh, sending to them unpaid, you can put these people to the canteen uh, where they can assist with the serving. And you will have only one touch of the one person's glove rather than everybody's coming and touching. So you can put some signages in the between, in, in front of the row of the um, canteen. People go directly to the washing place and they wash their hands. Because uh, we tend to forget, we say that, okay, I washed that uh, in the uh, fifth floor or the minus one, but up until to that direction that you come to the canteen, you, can, you might touch to different places. So it's better you have this uh, washing place where inside the canteen to be sure that everybody washed and there is uh, some person who is actually taking care of this process. So uh, health check, uh, this is actually one of the best uh, best practice that we used to see as this is not, um, this is well known. So basically you do the health checkup of your all colleagues. If they, they don't feel well and you have only one person who is working, no mind, you need to send him back. You need to uh, recall someone instead. So it is always easy to adjust the shift, but you don't want to end up with someone who is actually ill and working at, at, the, at the office and can spread the virus. Not only the virus, even the, the, even the normal flu can damage. So we tend to ignore, we tell that, okay, I'm coming to work so I can take some job, job to be done and that's it, but actually he is harming at the end of the day. We need to get, my, get this out of our mindset. Moving forward, um, yeah, colleagues, um, yeah, so you need to have the proper, uh, let's say, the, 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 uh, um, the uh, rules and regulations where between the, 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 the colleagues and the guest experience. So in order to, to have this, you need to reorganize all your shifts and, uh, and uh, how they're working. Maybe they were working too close. Now you need to put some separator. Maybe because in the front desk you didn't have any glasses. Now you need to have put the glass in between and glass in between with the guests to be sure that you are not uh, in the guest contact as well as the direct case contact as well as with your colleagues. So something is protecting. Or for example, in the reservation department or in the other back office department, you you tend to have two in the same table. Maybe you put the, let's say the separator or you have another desk, you, uh, you do your change your shift in the manning and you send someone to home and uh, let's say uh, you have only two in the place in the shift and the one person is working in the, in the another part of the desk and you are working from uh, another part of the desk. And in terms of the cleaning, you, wish, you, you need to be sure that you get, uh, let's say, the sanitizer from the housekeeping always in place. When they come, they clean their desk Then they, they do all these uh, precautionary me measurements. Um, and uh, we tend to see that nobody is taking care of this hygiene when they start using their laptops or their PC. So uh, most of the time we, touch a lot of places and we come and we use the, the keyboards. And this is actually one of the most uh, infected places. So it's better always to have these, um, you know, let's say sanitizers all around and clean your desk. So it will help a lot. Small, small uh, steps and uh, changes in our daily routines will definitely uh, have an impact on overall the hygiene. Of course, the vibes, bin bags, uh, about paper tissues all around so I'm just I'm not reading all of them so it is most of the stuff that we tend to let's say ignore now we need to put more uh, importance on it uh, yeah uh, so it is it, they share what you can share now you cannot share anymore you need to divide them let's say the, um, the tools as well as the, any any kind of stuff so you, everybody should have his own pen or on let's say desk, the keyboard that he used to use. So you don't want to have the say two persons working in the same place. One is on the morning shift, another one on the late shift, and he's coming and uh, working on the same keyboard. But maybe what you can do, you can do the cleaning of the workstation before you start. And always you, of course, uh, you, uh, wash your hand and you make sure that the, the soap dispensers are available and uh, it's always filled. Yeah, lockers, rooms, and toilets. I guess uh, most of our time, we know that uh, 
And the colleague uh, locker rooms are always, uh, as up until now, I have seen that this is the, uh, one of the places that we need as um, uh, leaders in the hotel industry and hospitality industry to be sure that are clean. It is not tend to be clean always. As you know, this is the only area that we always uh, alert the department heads, even then. Uh, we discussed in on the, our briefings, meetings. Still, people they they do have different uh, habits, which they continue again and again. Or you go and you see in the lockers, hangers in the down, or they or they do have the sandals around. So you need to be sure that all these kind of stuff are properly managed. Now you don't have these kind of habits anymore. Uh, and of course, you you make sure that the toilets and the locker rooms are clean uh, every time. Uh, every use uniforms are really uh, taking care you don't want to have the same uniform you are wearing almost the 10 days or four days or five days if you could, you need to know you need to understand well, what is the level of usage of the uniform so if you are tend to use the twice and you are working in the, the department way you you are involved on the let's say dishwashing of course, you need to change every day. But if you are, for example, uh, working in the back, of, uh, back office, maybe in the second day. So you need to get understand to all these habits that you were doing before and do some changes with the coming regulatory factors. Okay, moving forward, I guess, uh, of course, temporary close, as you know, the commercial point, of the meeting events, puffness and the thermal swimming pools, they are temporarily closed due to the COVID-19. Some of the other countries, they have uh, opened them, their pools, um, uh, and but still there, this is a um, uh, better way to go, let's say, uh, specifically with the meetings and events, I guess it will take a lot of time uh, to people to gather again in the big meetings and the weddings. So yeah, uh, I know that this is the one of the big areas that's really hurting the travel industry, but at least we do have other areas that's coming back slowly and slowly. Yeah, uh, key message to the guests, guests must be fully informed of all the ex ex exceptional service measures during their stay. Transparency is the key, what you are doing, they need to know. Clearly display the reminders of health and safety instructions in the lobby in the several, several languages. So you will have a lot of multiply language and play, people coming in your hotel. So you need to be sure that the same message uh, conveyed on the same manner in all areas. You need to understand how many people are coming from which country to your hotel. Uh, is it better to go with, let's say, English, French, and Russian, or English, Arabic, or uh, let's say, in the Italian language. So you need to decide which are the dominant factor, dominant language in your country. And uh, you put this, all these signages in all, all around. Uh, to be sure that the uh, messages are conveyed. So I guess this is the uh, last uh, slide for us. Um, uh, so it was, as, uh, as I told we, we, we tried to minimize everything. It's again a big, and, uh, big topic to discuss. Uh, a lot of chains, they have launched all these uh, guidelines, which is actually uh, way big than what we had discussed here. Each department, they do have, I don't know, almost 100 slides going details in the in depth of the guidelines. So yeah, you will always get new uh, stuff from other, uh, uh, other hotels. So best practice is always shared. Uh, please be uh, contact as well with the, our social media websites as well. We will be sharing most of the things that's coming and uh, any kind of the um, things that's published, articles we will be sharing in the group. Uh, this is definitely for the people who are from the independent hotels. For chain hotels, they receive the pack with all the regulations, but unfortunately for the, the independent hotels, uh, uh, they don't have that cost uh, to be involved in kind of big companies. They can purchase the whole these uh, processes, but um, uh, little by little, step by step, we're gonna adapt the, these guidelines and we will of course, um, survive this process and change the existing our habits let's say so i guess that's it uh, thank you for the um, uh, for your time i think it is it was a little bit um, over our timing we were forecasting around 50 minutes but it took us around from uh, one hour 30 minutes and uh, if you have any comments any questions please feel free to ask 
uh, we'll be asking the answering your questions as well in the if you have posted something in the comments in the uh, Facebook as well if you have anything in your mind drop the email you can uh, of course the subscribe our Facebook Instagram LinkedIn and YouTube accounts as well okay uh, so for the next time uh, as we are launching the every week new webinars so basically we're gonna discuss the next webinar about um, uh, LQA standards at the reservation department uh, by Lahan Aspeli. So we will discuss uh, every week we are going to have the webinars which we are um, uh, inviting to some experts from the industry and, uh, and the, in the near future we will have some workshops pertaining each, each department and the LQA standard is one of them so we will discuss the reservation department and the, all other departments every week uh, time to time we will not we don't want to uh, overboard you so basically next meeting will be around about the reservation department then uh, in upcoming sessions we will discuss about front office uh, housekeeping and the other operation areas that's it i guess uh, nijat do you have any comments to add well i was reading the uh, some of the questions and yeah. uh, uh, obviously it was answered and we don't want to take uh, much of your time however there was a few questions which I want to uh, read it. So uh, basically, everyone is asking that if this this norms and standards will will standing for a long period. I don't think so. It will stand for the long period. Uh, obviously, nobody wants to uh, be unsocialized or uh, change their habits. However, what we know from our practices is that every new habits every new guest demand and psychological approach is the new standards in the future i will say uh, one just example don't want to take your time um, a, de a decade ago a few decades ago um, smoking and uh, non-smoking rooms was an optional and it wasn't a standard it was asked in the check-in time in the reception if the guests would love to have a smoking or unsmoking room. Still, there is. However, what has changed right now, there are the dedicated rooms of the smoking and non-smoking room. So this came out from the best practices and came out from the uh, guest demand. And same things subsequently goes to the uh, restaurant and the uh, other departments. Now, what we uh, do know that uh, everyone cautious uh, uh, about the uh, standards nobody likes it all obviously but they do understand and comply with the uh, current norms uh, what it could be what could be a good message for the hoteliers at the moment try to make sure that you will uh, transform your hotel your department or your operation more into the digital advanced technology this will help you to um, uh, diverse your business and uh, and cope up with the new standards and norms. Just simple example, using the QR codes, replacing on your menus is not going to harm you a lot. Uh, this is something a very practical and easy to do and nowadays. Uh, this will avoid you is to save a major expenses as in the menu changing, pictures, price, and etc. This is also doable in the uh, current practices at the moment. So it's not a rocket science and uh, it's uh, practical at the moment. Thank you very much for your um, participation for today. We do hope that it was uh, beneficial for you, for your knowledge and experience. Uh, any new updates will come up related to the uh, COVID-19 or post-COVID-19 we will post a uh, report or the webinar for this. And we are inviting you for the next our session for the LQA standards. Uh, this is leading quality assurance standards. We do hope that uh, it's very familiar for the hoteliers. And we're going to talk about specifically about the reservation. As you know, reservation is one of the departments uh, where mystery callers are, um, are doing the pre-arrival standards, which will be presented by our expert, uh, Ms. Elaha. Stay tuned. Thank you very much. Please uh, connect on our social media. We do hope it was uh, it was beneficial for you for you today uh, for our webinar. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you very much.